Hello, my name is Leah Doyosef, and today we're working on our mini vocabulary lessons. This is number 11 out of 40, which means you've gone through 10 of these lessons so far. So you probably already know that in each lesson, we're going to work in detail on 10 words. Let's get started and see what 10 words we're going to work on today. These words are permanent, medicine, failure, conclusion, industrial, separate, quality, valuable, direct, and allow. So allow me to begin. Let's look at the first set of goals. Our goals are to be able to answer the following questions with the word yes. So the question is, can you understand and use these target words from band three? Can you understand these words when you read them? Can you pronounce them correctly? Can you spell these words? And can you use the words correctly in a sentence? Let's get started. The first word is industrial. Industrial is an adjective and it describes something related to industry. So the picture here, we have gears and lines and things that you would use in manufacturing, in building something. So they are industrial. It's an industrial picture. Here's a sample sentence. There are many factories in the industrial area. In fact, the fact that the factories are there makes the area industrial. So the city planners say, this will be the area of industry and they label it as the industrial area. That's how you use the adjective to describe the area. The next word is medicine. When I'm sick, the doctor suggests medicine to help me get healthy. Medicine can be in the form of pills. It can be liquid, but sometimes they say rest is the best medicine. And they're using it as a metaphor to say, what is it that's gonna make you feel better? Getting a good night's sleep, generally makes you feel better. So medicine is a noun that's used to describe these pills or chemicals or things that you can take to make you feel better or really anything you can do to feel better. The medicine is related to the medical or to making you feel better. Another word is permanent. Things that are solid that are going to stay forever are permanent. I spent a while when preparing this thinking about what I could show you a picture of that was really permanent. And I thought about permanent markers that you can't erase. And I thought about mountains, but mountains change over time. Waters wash through and change the shapes. So it may feel permanent, but it really changes quite a lot. So there really aren't so many things that are really permanent that will never change, but there are many things that may feel permanent or be like permanent, things that are part of who you are. That's a permanent characteristic. Or the school, which will be there after you graduate and you come back and your own kids are studying there, it'll feel permanent. But it'll probably have changed a little bit here and there. Another word is quality. I have a picture here of a broken hair, headphone, a broken ear pod, and low quality headphones break easily. High quality headphones probably don't break easily. The quality describes how good it is. So we can have high quality for very good things, low quality for bad things, and any kind of a quality in between. When you measure the quality of something, you're measuring how good it is. So we use this as an adjective to describe something. Was it a high quality dinner or kind of a low quality dinner and you don't feel so well? But we can measure the quality. We can think about how good something is and use the word quality to describe it. Valuable. The word valuable is also an adjective. 
And it's an adjective that doesn't describe how good it is. It describes how much someone wants it. Time and money are both valuable to most people, but not to everyone and not in the same way. In this picture, I have what looks to me like a very expensive watch. So it may have cost a lot of money, but it also represents time, which is valuable. The time that you spend on something is valuable. You could be doing something different. So when you think about the value, the value of something to one person isn't the same as the value of that thing to another person. Maybe I think it's valuable to spend hours on these words. And maybe you think it's more valuable to go and play outside. But each of us has our own measure of what's valuable to us. So we're describing what it is and how much we value using the word valuable. Allow. When I give you permission for something, I'm allowing it. So on my phone, if I put a check mark next to your name, I allow messages. When I uh, invite you into the room, I put a check mark that you were allowed to come in that day. And if you write a sentence showing that you know the word, I will allow that sentence, or maybe I won't allow the sentence if I don't think you've used the word correctly. So we can allow or disallow different things. Some places allow noisy parties and some places don't allow them. Some places allow you to use a dictionary to write your sentences and some places you can't. So you have to know what's allowed in each different circumstance. That's the word allow. The word separate can be used as a verb or as a noun. When you use it as a verb, you're describing the action of taking things apart. And when you use it as a noun or as an adjective, you're describing, excuse me, as an adjective, you're describing how they are not together, but they are separate. And the interesting thing about this word is that when we use the word as a verb, we pronounce the A in the middle, separate. So we emphasize that to separate things, to pull them apart. But when I describe those separate pieces, I swallow the A in the middle to describe the separate things instead of the action of separate. So that's a little bit of a difference. But here we're going to work on it as a verb. So to separate the pieces, and you have two individual pieces. Failure. We don't like to talk about failure very much because it means that we didn't accomplish our goal. We did it wrong. We got an X. It wasn't okay. On a test, the X shows a failure to give a correct answer. And if we miss all the answers, then we'll fail the whole test and we'll get a failure for the course. But that's not going to happen to you because you're studying the words. So you're not going to have a failure on this exam. You're going to learn the words, you're going to know them, and you're going to feel a sense of accomplishment and success. Success is the opposite of failure. Direct. We can describe many things as direct. And if you take a flight from one city and it goes direct to the city that you're going to, and you didn't stop anywhere else, it's called a direct flight, using the word direct as an adjective to describe something. If I want to give you the route to get from here to there, and I give you a straight line, that's the direct route. And if you want to stop somewhere on the way and have a little chat, and then you want to go maybe stop at the bathroom on your way, and then finally you get to where you're going, you took an indirect route. So you didn't get there straight. You didn't go directly from here to there you went all around a different way, an indirect way. Conclusion. When we get to the end, we want to draw conclusions. You write your conclusion at the end of an essay. In fact, you sometimes begin the last paragraph with in conclusion, and then you summarize the main points. So the conclusion comes 
after you've made some arguments or presented some new ideas. Sometimes we want to give all the evidence, give all the ideas, and then let people draw their own conclusions. I could tell you that if you study these words and write sentences with them every single day for a week, that you'll learn them. You might say, no, I don't believe you. And I would say, try it and draw your own conclusion. You can do it your way. You can take the same information and get to a different idea. Now, a conclusion is a noun. It's a thing. You might not be able to actually touch it, but it's an idea of the combination of everything you understood from what you've heard so far, which is why it makes such a good last paragraph when you're writing. I said a lot of things. In conclusion, learning vocabulary is important. So here are the 10 words that we have studied in this lesson. The first word is allow, spelled with two L's, A-L-L-O-W. Allow means that it's something that you can let happen or let in or approve of. Can you say allow? Yeah, you only pronounce one of the L's. Say it again, allow. The next word is conclusion. Both of the C's in this word have a hard C sound. con clu shun. There are lots of words that end in S-I-O-N or T-I-O-N, and they're pronounced shun, even though they have a T-I-O-N or S-I-O-N, and that doesn't seem like the right pronunciation. It is. Conclusion. Can you say it? Conclusion? Direct is that straight line, the way to get from one thing direct to another without stopping or doing anything in the middle. It's D-I-R-E-C-T, direct. Failure is the opposite of success. And we have here the A-I combination, failure, but it sounds just makes a hard A sound. You don't hear the I in that, sent in that word. F-A-I-L-U-R-E. And the E at the end, that's a silent E that makes the U sound a little bit different. Failure, not fail R. So failure. Industrial. Industry is a noun and industrial is the adjective. Industry ends with a Y. So when you want to add the AL to turn it into an adjective, you need to change that Y to an I so that you don't have a Y in the middle of the word. Industrial, I-N-D-U-S-T-R-I-A-L, industrial. The next word is medicine. It sounds a little bit like medical. So again, medical as the adjective, has the A-L at the end. Medicine is the noun, M-E-D, the same prefix for anything related to health and body, I-C-I-N-E. The C here is a soft C, making more of an S sound, and that's because it comes right before the letter I. When C comes before I or E, it makes an S sound most of the time. So medicine, even though it has an S sound, has the C letter in the middle. Permanent. Permanent, P-E-R-M-A-N-E-N-T. Perma, as a prefix, means something that's solid, unchanging. Permanent is something that's gonna stay forever, or as close to forever as we can imagine. Permanent. Quality is a measure of how good something is. And it starts with Q-U. In English, there aren't any words that begin with Q that don't have a U right after it. So if you remember the Q at the beginning, it has a U right after it. In the English language, English words will not have Q without U. So Q-U, qua, and then the A for the A, L-I-T-Y, quality. Separate. One of the things we're doing here is separating the sounds 
to make it easier to remember how to spell the words. So we have S-E-P-A-R-A-T-E. -E. Now one of the tricks I use to remember this is that we've got E's on the outside and A's on the inside. S-E-P-A-R-A-T-E. -E. So when you're checking yourself, check that the E's are on the outside and the A's are on the inside. You don't want to separate those two A's. They go together. Just a little trick to remember the spelling. Valuable. Valuable is the things that are important. And this has that conclusion, that ending, A-L-E, means it's able. This is something you are able to put a value on. In fact, you can put a value on just about anything. And then you can say how valuable it is to you or to somebody else. Now that we've reviewed these words, hopefully you've had enough time to copy them into your notebook. If you didn't, take a picture of it, the screen right now. And we're gonna play a game. Are you ready? All right, this is a matching game. I have on the screen here the pictures that I used to introduce these words. Each picture should remind you of one of the words. Let's look at the first one. Before I reveal it, take a few moments and see if you can guess what the words are. All right, the first one looks like pills. And we said that pills or liquids or anything that makes you feel better is called medicine. The next picture we've got jewelry, which might be money value, time, which has value. So this is a reminder for the word valuable. The next picture shows the flights from one city direct to many other cities. And here we've got those low quality earphones. We can measure the quality of something. And these two puzzle pieces were together and now they are separate. Somebody separated them. Did you guess them all right? I'll bet you did. Good for you. Let's take a look at the next set. Now, if you have the list written in front of you, you've got five words already checked off and five more to match with these picture clues. Which ones do you think match? Why did I give you that green check mark? That was for things which were acceptable, things which you could allow. We allow something and give it a check. Yep, that's okay. If it's not okay, ah, failure. And what about this picture with the gears and the building and all the things related to the factories? That's the industrial area or the industrial word. And what do we write at the end of our essay? In conclusion, it's the uh, decisions that we can make based on the evidence. And what is it that we can hold strong that will never change the things that are permanent? I still haven't thought of anything that's really permanent, not even language. Language is constantly changing with how people use it. So permanent is an idea that we've got. But I'm not sure we've got solid examples. But try. Keep thinking. it. If you get one, send me a message. So what should you do? Now that we've got a whole bunch of new words and you want to really learn them, what can you do? Start by trying to copy each word onto a card and copy the translation onto another card. Flip them over, mix them up, and play a matching game. Play the memory game by yourself. Play it with your friends. You could also have a card and look for somebody who's got the matching card, the translation. You can play a game with a whole group of people. You could make those into flashcards. You hold them together and look at one side and then the other. So you've got quite a few options for how you can practice with these cards. You could also try putting the word on one side and a picture on the other side. Draw yourself a picture, 
or print out a picture. So in order to make sure that you've got these words, I'm going to show you the list one more time. Make sure you've copied them down so that you can practice and learn these words on your own. Let's just take another minute and repeat each word again. Allow. Your turn. Conclusion. Direct. Failure. Industrial. Medicine. Permanent. Quality. Separate. Valuable. And I hope you found this lesson valuable and that you're learning these new words. I want to wish you good luck and lots of good practicing. And I will see you another time to present more words. As you go through the process, we've come to the end of another lesson. And I believe you can understand these target words, understand them when you read them, pronounce them correctly, spell them correctly, and use them correctly in a sentence. Great work. Oh, we're not at a break. Are we at a break? We're at a break. Take a break.
Welcome back. I hope you had a good break. And we are here for mini lesson number 12 out of 40. By now you know the routine. Each of these mini lessons is going to focus on 10 words. So let's look at which words we've got today. Influence. Variety. Permit. Quantity. Conduct. Analyze. Familiar. Direct. Series. And mental. Those are the words that we're going to get into. So ask yourself, can you understand and use these target words from band three? Can you understand the words when you're reading them? Can you pronounce each of these words correctly? Can you spell the words? Can you use them correctly in a sentence? By the end of this mini lesson, I hope you'll be able to say yes I can to each of these questions. Let's get started. Analyze. Analyze is the process of looking very carefully at what we've got. Sample sentence, we need to analyze this data. In the picture, we can see someone using a magnifying glass to look very closely at the data in the chart in the background. So analyze is a verb to do the action. What you get out of the action of analyze is an analysis. The verb and the noun are similar, but a bit different. When we spell analyze as a verb, we spell it with a Z. Especially if we're American, if we're British, you might spell it with an S. But we're not going to get into that detail today. The next word is quantity. How many do you want? When you ask the question, how many, you want to know the quantity. If you can count them, you're looking for quantity. In the last mini lesson, we looked at quality. Now, the words quantity and quality sound pretty similar. They both begin with Q-U-A, but I'll give you a trick to remember the difference. The word count has the letter N in it, ends with N-T, and the word quantity has N-T in it. So if you can count it, it has to do with quantity. When you want to value something, then it's quality, how good it is. So that's different. In this picture, we've got an abacus. That's an old tool that was used for counting and for doing addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. It's called an abacus, and it's used to measure the quantity, how much or how many of something do we have. The next word is permit. In the picture, there's a driving permit. The verb to permit, to allow something, goes with the noun of a permit. If you're being allowed or being permitted to do something, you might need to have a specific permit in order to do it. For example, a driver's license is a type of permit it permits you to drive a car. I, in fact, have a teaching license which permits me to teach. Without this license, I can't teach you. Well, the, the permission comes from the permit which allows me to do my job. A sample sentence you can see in front of you, certain papers permit you to drive a car or permit you to do something that you had to pass some kind of a test in order to be able to do. The next word is direct. In our last lesson, we had direct as an adjective showing that you went from one place to another without stopping in between. Here we have direct as a verb, meaning to tell someone in which direction to go or to tell you if you want to get over there, go straight that way. The policeman stops some cars and permits others to go, stops these and then directs the others to go. So directing traffic is telling the cars which ones can go and which ones need to wait. 
The next word is influence. And in the picture here, we have a bunch of icons of social media. And if you want to influence a lot of people, then you want to use that megaphone to shout your message on all of these social media venues to get your message to the most number of people. So you can influence a lot of people. Influence is making some change with them, convincing people of something. Sample sentence here, social media influences many people today. And it's a verb, it's something that you can do to other people. Mental. Mental is an adjective describing all the things that happen in your brain. When you're thinking about something, you're doing a mental process. So the adjective is gonna describe things which are happening that are related to your brain or your thoughts. This picture shows a colorful mental image. That means it's an image in your mind or of your mind. In this case, the colorful brain. I want this to make a mental note. When you see that picture, you would think of the word mental. Familiar. Here's a picture of someone who may look familiar to you. It's the picture I see when I look in the mirror every day. You might say to someone, you look familiar. Have we met before? Or you could use it not related to people, but to areas. Oh, I'm familiar with this area. You should park here because over there, there's no good parking. It's an adjective that you can describe, used to describe nouns, people, places, things, if you're familiar with how something works. So you can also describe processes. The next word is conduct. And conduct as a verb means to do something or make it happen. Um, in the picture, you can see the results of a survey. Researchers conduct surveys to learn what people think. So when you make the survey happen, give it to other people, gather their answers back and produce the results, that's called conducting a survey. So it's a bigger process. If we think of big processes and think of an orchestra with the violinists and the trombone players and all the different musical instruments, each one has a specific role to play and the conductor stands at the front and tells everybody what to do and how. So they are conducting the orchestra. So making something bigger than just one role happen all together. Just like conducting a survey is passing out the questions, gathering the information back together, and producing a report is conduct a survey. You can also conduct an orchestra to make all those sounds happen together and make a beautiful music. So we conduct things that have lots of complicated pieces. Speaking of lots of complicated pieces, in this picture, you've got a variety of colors and maybe of flavors. So we've got a sample sentence. Choose from a variety of different candies. Variety describes all the different things. I could say there are a variety of students watching this lesson, meaning that each and every one of you is a little bit different, maybe even a lot different. Variety by itself is a noun. It doesn't describe how different. It is the idea that there are many different pieces of the same kind of thing. So a variety of flavors, a variety of choices, a variety of colors of the different shirts you could wear. So any place where you've got a bunch of things that are the same big type, but differences among them, you have a variety. And it also seems funny that the word variety, which always means more than one, is a singular word. You have a variety representing all the different pieces. That's tricky. Think about it for a minute. Variety, which represents many, is a single word. Here's another word that describes many, 
a series. On Netflix, you can watch a whole series in one time. Netflix also remembers, remembers where you are in the series. A series doesn't have to be just on TV. It can also be a series of vocabulary mini lessons or a series of cards. Each one comes one after the other. The thing that makes a series special is that the group has a specific order to it. And that makes it a series. Otherwise, it's just a collection. In fact, you have the word collection in an earlier lesson. So the difference between a series and a collection is that the series goes in a specific order. Now, Netflix will let you watch the shows out of order, but it does tell you what the order is. So here are the 10 words that we've just looked at. Analyze look at something very closely, conduct to do something complicated, direct to tell how it's going to happen, familiar, things that you've seen before, done before, influence, that pressure we can put to make someone do something a little different than what they might have done otherwise, mental, everything related to the brain, permit, to allow something to happen. Quantity, a measurement of how much we have or how many. Series, a set of things in order. And variety, a set of many different things that we can choose from. Let's play a game. I've taken the pictures that I used to introduce each idea and put five of them on the screen. Take a moment to see if you can guess which words match which pictures? How many of these do you remember? Let's take a look. The first one's a picture of a colorful brain. That brings me a mental image. That's a mental picture. I have this logo here that reminds me I can watch things in order. That's a series of things that happen in order. And when I look closely at the data, I'm looking closely. I analyze something. And if I have a lot of choices, perhaps I have a variety of candy. And I want to send my message through many different methods, many different applications, because I want to influence a lot of different people. So I can use social media to influence. If you've got your list on paper, you may have checked off the five words that we just had. You know which five are left. Can you match those words to these pictures? What's the first one? We've got the policeman directing traffic. And he permits some people to go and some people have to wait. And when we want to count something, we're going to measure the quantity of it. And when we want a survey, we want to conduct a survey to make the questions, send them, gather, analyze, conduct all those different pieces. And who's that picture? Someone who looks familiar. I think that's a picture of Leah. So what can we do with all these words? I've introduced you to them. We've talked about what they mean. You've heard sample sentences, how to pronounce them. You've seen how to spell them. And now we want to practice. So you can practice at home and quiz yourself on these words. Start by copying each word onto a different card. Put the English word on one card and put the Arabic or the Hebrew on another card. And then mix them all up, play a matching game, turn over each one. If you've got a pair and they work, great, set it aside, you get points. Play with your friends. You could also use them as flashcards to check yourself if you remember the meaning. You could draw pictures on one side or the other. Play memory games, use flashcards. You can do just about anything you want with these words. Let's take a look one more time. If you haven't had a chance, 
to write the words, now is a good time to put them into your notebook. I'll spell them out for you. Analyze is A-N-A-L-Y-Z-E. Conduct, C-O-N-D-U-C-T. Direct, D-I-R-E-C-T. Familiar, F-A-M-I-L-I-A-R. Influence, I-N-F-L-U-E-N-C-E. -E. That one's tricky. Influence. Mental, M-E-N-T-A-L. Permit, P-E-R-M-I-T. Quantity, Q -U -A -N -T -I -T -Y. Q-U-A-N-T-I-T-Y. Series, S -E -R -I -E -S. V-A-R-I-E-T-Y. 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 Variety. And now that we've come to the end of this mini lesson, I'll bet you're saying to yourself, now I can understand and use these target words from band three. Now you can understand the word when you read it. Now you can pronounce the words correctly. Now you can spell these words. And now you can use the words correctly in a sentence. And if you don't feel 100% confident about these words, go back through and write them again and make up new sentences and make flashcards and practice with them because you can learn all of these words. Good luck.